All right, so 20 sections of road, water purification. So water purification's got 13 seconds left. Let me put that back up there. Clean water for every residence. Okay. So a lot of this is just hinging on this right here. Boom. So that's completed. Now I can go back to municipal, get a drinking fountain. Now I want my drinking fountain to cover all my residences. I think that's, yep, that's as extreme as I can make it. So this is going to give me more residents. It's going to let me upgrade these buildings. That's going to let me get through this chapter. And then for my additional sections of road, I am going to continue this pattern of making these two by three cubicles or uh, sections of, of building area. Because what I have found is that this is the most manageable for most parts of the game. So, you know, we're just flying along here. It's been a few minutes. We're almost through uh, the second chapter. And again, just to make, you know, the chapters happy, I'm just kind of continuing these segments here. So I finish these chapters. Now, one thing that does hold people up is they forget to hit the immigrant icon in the corner. And by not hitting that immigrant icon, you're not going to keep increasing your population. Um, so if there's one thing that's probably going to keep you attached to your phone, logged into the game, it's going to be keeping your population up. Um, there are days where I get busy and I can't just uh, sit here and kind of farm the immigrant button. And those are days where the game does go a little bit slower, but that's life. So I need to do five more sections of road. So I think I'm just going to continue doing this uh, kind of like modular city building. Boom. Okay. So in about 30 seconds, we're going to have our ordinary residences up to level two. At least we're going to start. All right, there we go. And then we'll be on to the next chapter. So by following these guides on the right hand side of the corner, this game will explain itself. There are a few things that can be confusing, but if you stick to these, uh, these chapter guides on the right hand side, I think, I think you'll be okay. You'll be able to figure it out. Oh, I'm curious about this. Okay. I mean, that's great. So it looks like my city is suitable for tobacco and beet. Um, that's actually great because those are two of the mid-game cash crops that you have to grow. Um, another question I had was about the layout of the map and about the resources on the map if you start another account. The question was, is, are the resources in the same spot? From what I can tell, they are. Um, it looks a lot like my original city. I'm going to go ahead and say yes, maybe with some slight variation to this coastline down here that is non-functional. But... General location of all the resource spots. Yes, they are the same. All right. Chapter, chapter, chapter. How are we doing? Oh, we missed one. So, like, we, we missed a hut over here. So, it's going to cost us a, a minute. But that's all right. So, every time you build something, you're going to want to click this button here. Down here with the, with the map and the little compass. And you're going to want to make sure that your sanitation, security, fire risk, and danger 
uh, don't have little magnifying glasses up in the corner. If they do, that means something's wrong. There's something wrong with one of the buildings you built um, and that you need to investigate it. 20 seconds, man. There we are, that's complete. Next chapter, we get two more green diamonds, some more gold, we get some speed ups, we get another immigrant call in. Now look at this, we get eight more ordinary residences. Now those are a priority, because those are gonna get us more population, uh, and they're gonna really help us out if we need to build more buildings. A city of 100 residents. All right, so one of the goals is gonna be a population of 100. So we're already at 42, so we're about halfway there. Construct eight ordinary residences. I mean, that's to be expected. Now, especially since this chapter um, from the looks of it, it's, it's going to be population-based. We really want to make sure... Uh, you know what? I probably shouldn't have done that. Um, man. So, I should have put these residences around this water fountain. I didn't because I was thinking, like my other account, which has an abundance of gold, an abundance of population. Um, so that's one thing where I kind of tripped myself. Now to fix it, I'm going to have to build another water fountain right here. But mistakes happen. Um, one thing I will say about this game is you're going to be constantly revising your city, redesigning it, moving things around. I'm hoping that with this system that I'm starting out with, I'm hoping that I can keep things relatively similar to how they are in my end game. And I won't need to do a ton of redesigning like I did on my first sitting city. All right, let's see what else we can do. Study the masonry tech. Okay, where is masonry? Hmm, hmm, hmm. There it is. So it's right down here. We're going to need it to unlock the repair station, coconut tree, circular square, Royal Avenue. But if you look at this line coming back out the left-hand side of the masonry um, icon, it goes up to the wheel. So we need to do the wheel first. It's going to take two minutes. Boom. So we've added a few immigrants here. It looks like none of my, uh, none of my little huts are uh, fully populated yet. Construct two decorations. Tools tech have a population of 100. Okay, so what I'm going to do for the next few minutes is I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to farm this immigrants button and then hopefully what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to upgrade some of these uh, rough wigwams. <laughs> and that is going to give us the population we need. Now, as far as the technology, studying the tech, 
Oh, we have two more. Let's see if, nope. None where we need them, okay. So as far as the tech goes, if you add friends in the game, let's see if there's some friendlier characters on right now. I think I saw it. There's one of my friends. Yorgios. So I know this guy. Um, he's in my alliance in my other account. Um, I've added him because I know he's done a lot of his research. He's got a nice town. He's got a nice city here. Look at this. Probably should have looked at this myself. That's complex. Go him. Wow. So he's off to a very good start. I, I hope my city <laughs> looks like this one day. Good, good for Yorgi. So I added Yorgi. I completed my first tech. It's the wheel. Now we're going down to masonry. It's going to take five minutes. Hopefully, let's see if Yorgi got back to me. Nope. So, studying that tech, it's going to take five minutes. Remember, you got to keep clicking the immigrant button. Otherwise, these huts will not get new immigrants in them. Um, one of the most common emails that I get is, I'm not getting immigrants. Why am I not getting immigrants? Uh, one, they might not have access to water. Uh, B, you might not be clicking the button enough. Um, let's see. As I'm saying this, I'm not getting immigrants. It's so funny. Um, there we go. Looks like we got three more in at least one of these buildings. There it is. So look, now we can upgrade this building here. It's going to give us room for more immigrants. And it'll give us time for our tech to com complete as well. This game will keep you busy. You know, in, in the time I've been making this video, I've had maybe a minute downtime. Uh, so, you know, the game keeps you clicking. The game keeps you moving through these, uh, through these stages relatively quickly. Now, the game is going to quickly, quickly start demanding more and more of you. So for those itching for a little more, just hang in there. We got some tech to do. Our population's already up to 88. So, you know, another two or three minutes, it'll be above 100. Uh, let's see if we can do any decorations. We might not be able to do them yet. Masonry. So masonry is going to take another three minutes. So we want to save our speed ups because right now, um, the game doesn't have a very good reward system for giving out speed ups, especially in the late game. So you want to save up as many of them as possible. But let's say I was really anxious and I wanted to speed this up. All you would do is you would click this button up here and it would bring this button up. And then you'd be able to either use, uh, you know, one of these wooden hourglasses for a five minute speed up. Let's say you wanted to purchase a metal hourglass. You just click this uh, up here in the corner, this plus sign. It opens up the screen here and then you could pick as many as you want. Um, I do this occasionally if I'm heading off to bed and, you know, there's something that's going to take a long time. But like I said, in the late game, when you get your military opened up, there's going to be some very, very long march times, especially if you're going for, you know, a large resource fill field that's a few tiles away. And you're really going to want these uh, in the late game. So I recommend saving them. Um, if you really get invested in the game, I've talked to a lot of people who have said, you know, they've spent the uh, two to ten dollars to get the first pack. Um, it's absolutely worth it. I did it myself. I'm not going to do it on this account. Um, I think that this account should be more of a purist account to show you that it's possible. Uh, so we're just going to keep, you know, cycling through these chapters without we're going to do it the hard way. That's all. So while we've been talking and clicking our immigrant button, um, all of our houses have filled up. So we're going to get over 100 here in the next minute or so. Okay. 
So yeah, this tech is going to be one of the things that holds us up the most. Um, what I would recommend for while you're waiting on tech is to just leave your phone open next to you and just keep hitting that immigrant button as it's needed. So right now it's not needed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait the 50 seconds for this tech to be finished. I'm going to start the next one. And then I'm going to log out of this account. I'm going to go to my other account and I'm going to make sure that I'm not holding myself up there either. This is all going to work out perfectly. So I'm going to call in a few more immigrants. I'm full on immigrants. I've got 20 seconds left on tech. This will also show you guys that it is possible to log out of one account and into another account. I know some games make it really hard or, um, you know, they, they essentially make it impossible to do. This game is not doing that right now. Oh, looks like our tech finished. So we're going to start our next one. What was our next one again? Let's go double check. Tools tech. Where is tools? Watch it be really far away. Tools, tools, tools. Where are you? So tools is here. So I need to do carpentry first. That's going to take five minutes. Start. Now to show you guys the friend system, I'm going to show you guys this while we're jumping back and forth between accounts. I've got both my accounts on the same server. So this is the world chat. It's kind of aggressive and hostile earlier, but not usually like that. I'm just going to put a nice little hello. I'll put that in the world chat. Boom. You'll see that scroll across the screen right there. Boom. So now I'm going to hit this. I am going to hit my settings. I'm going to log out. Account login. Logged in with my Facebook originally. All right, so it looks like I'm on day 16. I just got a time ball. I believe that's a one day speed up. I'll double check here in a minute. Um, so one thing on my main account that has been holding me up is my city is so big that I have been needing to do massive redesigns. And some of the things that I've been struggling with is keeping all of my areas compartmentalized and separated from each other. So I started breaking down all of my farms and I started moving them into these positions around water wheels. And at the same time, I was doing residences and I was trying to get all my residences to be covered by my universities and my coliseums, I, I found a double-edged sword. So by moving my farms, I was opening up population. I was then using that population to move residences. When you move a residence, that residence will empty out and it needs to refill uh, by clicking the immigrant button. So what I did is I broke down my farms, made a huge open uh, unemployed population, used that population to move these residences kind of into this position. Um, but in doing so, I lost a lot of my population. So now I don't have the population to open up farms. Because I don't have farms, I don't have the resources to collect gold from my citizens 
to build more funds. So what I've done here is I've caught myself in this downward cycle of spending resources to try to catch up. Uh, and the only thing that's working for me right now is patience. Um, so this is what I'm trying to avoid in my new city. I let this massive residential area sprawl outward and consume way too much space. And what it did is it put an undue stress on my population base because I had to have all these clinics and security offices to cover this residential area that went out, you know, out to here and then down around this lake. It was massive. So I found a more efficient way to organize my residences, but to do that, I lost my agriculture. So right now I'm slowly building my population back up. I'm doing that by clicking on these residences that aren't leveled up all the way. I'm clicking on this info. I'm going to use my icon here. Kind of looks like a mushroom cloud. Uh, I'm going to click that info. Carpets can improve the standard of living. So that means I need to get a carpet stall somewhere in here. So what I'm doing is I'm clicking my gladiate, um, my Coliseum. It looks like all these residences are covered by the Coliseum. And then I've got a university here where all of my residences need to be covered by a university as well. Taxation's getting in the way. Uh, where is my university? Other problem with having a massive, massive sprawling city, it is hard to see all the buildings that are going on in here, and it's hard to keep track of them. So here's my university. It covers all these green buildings here. So I'm going to pull out, if I can, I'm probably not going to be able to because I don't have enough uh, freed up population. I want to pull out these. I'm going to need 70 workers to move this apartment building. I've only got 49. So, I mean, I just told you guys the problem I got myself into, and I feel kind of silly getting myself back into it. But if I break down this date farm, I'm going to get 18 workers. If I break down a wheat field, I'm going to get 22. If I break down a tobacco patch, 18. So I'm going to break down a wheat field, even though I know it's only a temporary solution. But by getting this city into it by getting this apartment building into a better location i'm actually going to get my population increased because i'm going to be able to meet the needs of those residences much better and the population will increase much faster so this is you know day 16 <laughs> compared to day 1 so I've got such a low population. This security office down here is not working. Thankfully, at this point in the game, I've got every section of the map layered. So I'm not actually suffering by that security office not being at work. I want it to be at work. So I might break down another one of these wheat fields. Off production and dumpster. Oh, that's a road problem. So you see that little exclamation mark? That means there's a problem. Let's go click on it. Let's click info. There's no roads here. I could have saved myself a wheat field if I had read that. Ah, oh, man. Okay. We're learning lessons here.